And it's, we are talking about The Mandalorian episode 306, Guns for Hire. We're going to review the episode and then get into a spoiler breakdown of the episode starting now. Welcome to Nerd Social, I'm Nathan. And I'm Colin. Hey, so the spoiler free log line for this episode is The Mandalorian visits an opulent world. So, Colin, what do you think of this episode? This was a very solid episode. I think that there was self contained mystery involved here and also lots of cameos that were really great to see. And it was, it, it's another new world. And I think that Star Wars, they tried to bring in all these different types of worlds. It's hard, it's hard to keep track of all of them, but it's nice to go to the all these different types of places that are a mixture of certain worlds that you've seen before and then some that you haven't seen before. So, I, I think I like. Like that aspect of it. I like the aspect that you're reintroducing some old characters as well that are not as prominent or not as uh, prioritized in the Star Wars world. So I think that was a really nice touch there. And and also, yeah, there was a, like I said, it was self-contained mystery throughout the whole uh, throughout the whole episode that I found really intriguing, and it, the the ending was pretty cool overall. So yeah, overall a very solid solid kind of one-off episode. I think that in terms of rewatchability is pretty high, especially for people that want to look at the cameos and see what type of why are those characters there and what are they doing and how are they think with the larger cast so overall pretty solid yeah i like the episode as well i don't know for me whether or not the rewatchability is really high for like a one-off like I, I think if you were uninitiated and you wanted this to just drop in on the show this is like a fun yeah. episode so you could rewatch it like that but within the overall arc of the season i feel like it was not really rewatchable it's, it doesn't yeah. connect that much into the next thing or the thing before it but it does and it doesn't there's just a whole plot in the middle that has nothing to do with anything it's just like a fun one off. That's why I like the episode. I like the episode. I know there's some complaining about the episode because people think that it was like a waste of time, but it's, it's like a one off without spoiling too much about the episode. One off, like detective story sort of thing in the middle of the season. Again, some people might think is a distraction from the overall arc of the season, but like that's sort of things that they did in the first season of the show. They did one off episodes that were like homages to like gunslinger movies and things like this. And this was an homage to like a true detective or a mystery sort of yeah. thing, which is like I said, fun to see that in Star Wars, like doing different yeah, genres yeah. in the genre of science fantasy which is what star wars is so that's a response yeah. so how would you rate this episode i would give an eight overall road trip i think that it's again solid i think that the cameos definitely put it over into the eight category whereas if it was just without cameos or some other actors probably would be lower but yeah it's solid eight yeah probably have it a little bit lower people have been complaining about the cameos the cameos are fine they're fun but like i said as a person who and i can only review things based upon who i am and i watched all the rebels and i've watched mm -hmm. all the clone wars and things like that so i'm interested in the overall story arc and this one-off episode is nice if you're not interested in the overall story so it's pulling me away from the overall story but it still was fun yeah. i'm not going to give it like a six or a five but i think I, I think a dinner party is where i'm landing on this so, so yeah. yeah definitely something to discuss over dinner but not necessarily something to go out to the theater to see i think all yeah right, so i do have yeah. one more thing to say about the overarching story is that uh, they've really done a good job of kind of revisiting certain things because we can get into the spoiler part but just like last week's episode and we episode two weeks ago they're kind of it's it speaks to how Filoni and Favreau has a vision has a grander vision where it's like hanging up loose ends here and there of stories that were left in the back burner so I think I really do appreciate that they put this into so much care into thinking about it in the larger scheme of things and say oh yeah why don't we revisit that why don't we re revisit this because I think that's very important for us to see where they're at in, in terms of the in terms of the overarching story. I would also say that I re really enjoyed this episode and I forgot to mention I usually do at the beginning is written by John Favreau and I'm um, directed by Bryce Dallas Howard. And her last mm -hmm. episode, I think, was The Air, which is where Bo Katan first showed up. And I think this is a really right. good episode. Yeah. And I'll mention some of some other things that she, that she made. It was, I guess it was for the script, but yeah, some interesting things that parallel that episode that she directed in the I definitely want to see more stuff from her. Uh, yep. And I'm sure she'd rather be behind the camera as well, given all the ridiculousness that happens to her as an actor, people talking about her yeah. body. Yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. All right, let's talk about it. All right. <laughs> so before we get into the spoiler, please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the conversation. And with that, spoilers ahead. All right, so we have screenshots of the episode. We can run through those. So this actually starts with some somewhat of a love story at the beginning on this corn ship. Yeah, this is a pretty weird looking ship, but it looks, I guess, is what you might expect from an aquatic species. It looks like the animal. So if you haven't seen Clone Wars, the corn and the Mon Calamari were always fighting with each other, but it seems like at this point they're not fighting each with each other. So it's interesting. It also found interesting the set design here that yeah. they prefer to be underwater. So the captain taking the privilege of being the captain, she gets to be. <laughs> 
<laughs> underwater while everyone else is at their stations. But uh, yeah. yeah, and then they have this imperial ship that they think that is trying to ask for tribute. She says she thinks that they're like a warlord. Right. Um, yeah, and it's just, I guess it's, it's staffed by these Mandalorians who took the ship. Yeah, this mm -hmm. whole beginning is interesting and cute. What did you guys, what did you think of uh, this? There's Romeo and Juliet, Man Calamari, because the beginning of them, the, the thing I was talking about with Bryce Hightop and Dallas Howard, the beginning of her episode was also like two lovers together. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the frog lady. The, the frog right? lady and her husband. Yeah, her husband, connect, yep. Connecting, yeah. Yeah, I think that it's definitely great to see it from a non-humanoid perspective is that yeah. yes, there is love in the universe besides just humanoid love yeah. and it's good. And sometimes it can, for some people, it can get cringy, especially with the tentacles and stuff like that, but it's love. They love each other. So yeah. it's definitely a very good type of a different look, a different take about, about there's love everywhere in the universe. It's not just, it's not, it's not just exclusive to humanoids yeah. <laughs> and humans. I think like a part of me wants to see this like one-off thing. So I think that the, the part of the reason that I rated this a seven instead of an eight is because we only get eight episodes in the season. Unlike Clone right. Wars, where we got, I feel like, 15 or 20. Yeah. I like these one-off episodes when, in, in a Clone Wars season because they're just cool, like, slice of life, slice of galaxy, like, other things that are happening in the galaxy while our main heroes are doing their thing. People are mm -hmm. just living their lives. So I, I would like to see an episode of what's happening with this royal family and this son that, that ran away to fall in love, basically, with the enemy, this Romeo and Juliet story. This would be a cool, like, one-off, like, a Clone Wars episode. And, and the Clone Wars would take the time to do one-off episodes about that. And the Bad Batch has less episodes, but still have like 16 episodes so they sometimes do one off like this as well yeah where they tell stories that that don't necessarily have to do with the overall right but as because they only have eight episodes that's i, I think that's why some people didn't like the episode and that's why i dash it down a little bit but like i said it's still fun i'd like them to give me more episodes or just uh, if they're going to do stuff like this yeah yeah the frog lady one from the season was definitely a distraction and the, we the saw one, it was like it was the like one in the cave caves yeah. of the yeah. spiders yeah. and yeah we were like what's going on here and then there was one that was like right before there was the one that was before ahsoka ahsoka episode which was like a distraction and was like what's going on we want to see ahsoka because it was in the pre previous episode where bo katan name dropped her and we're like oh yeah we're gonna do that but no they have to drag it out a little bit longer so yeah it was been done like in terms of what they're doing with these uh, episodes here so most of this episode is just with bo katan and uh, and din on this planet with plazier 15 uh, yeah. and they they know that the, the mandalorian fleet is here and they're coming mm -hmm. to connect with the mandalorian fleet but they get waylaid by the by the duchess of this planet and they, it's interesting that i feel like this technology to take over a ship if this technology exists, why didn't the Empire use it all the time to stop the rebels? Can you just take over someone's ship? They trademarked it. You could just, you could probably get away with that by saying that this is an independent world, so they're not really under yeah. the purview of the Empire, maybe. Who knows? I don't know, yeah. but I feel like if this is like something, maybe you have to be in orbit. No, that, that has to be explained a little bit to me. <laughs> yeah, so they involuntary diverted by the planet's rulers, ex-Imperial officer, Captain Bombardier, and an unnamed Duchess. It's just, it's just the Duchess. So yeah, immediately clock, these are like Imperial droids, because the Imperial droids are, yeah. of course, black. They painted black for some reason. It's just to be thematically consistent. They show the chain codes, just identification, and they're using a loophole because weapons are apparently part of their religion because they can't have they can't have weapons inside of the city. So I think this is I think what they're trying to do is not a nod to Imperial Japan and yeah. also Germany. After the war, they weren't allowed to have mm -hmm. militaries. So their ability to protect themselves are very restricted. So yeah. I do want to mention one thing about the world. It reminds me a lot of Disney World. Yeah. When he and went to the monorail. Yeah. It's yeah. like sunny skies. It's like very beautiful. I'm like, I want to go there. It's like, take, I want to take a vacation there. Yeah, it basically looks, then, it basically yeah. looks Epcot. From the, yeah, from pretty a, much. I think that's what they were, maybe that's what they were going for. This domed, domed <laughs> thing. Let me see, go back a little, a little bit here. Uh, yeah. yeah, this domed. Yeah, looks like Epcot. It looks like mm -hmm. Epcot was real. Basically, these do these domes, dome cities. Although Mandalore also had a dome city, but it didn't have the like yeah. the cross hatches that looked very much like Epcot. The square. Yeah. So anyway, I skipped ahead too much. So yeah, this is where they Jack Black and Lizzo is the Duchess. Lizzie, yeah. He's also uh, was a former Imperial. Apparently, I feel like he seems like on the up and up. At the beginning, you sort of suspect him because he was a former Imperial and he's the one who set up these bots. But it turns out that he's he's being straight with her or being straight with uh, the Duchess and everyone else. Right. So, yeah, yeah, it was very interesting because the contrast of yeah. uh, like Kane and then like the previous episode is like yeah. this kind of duplicitous person and then now it's like this, oh, he's actually reformed. It's yeah. weird that way to see that dynamic. Yeah, so yeah, this is showing this uh, footage of all the droids going crazy. So yeah, what did you think of Christopher Lloyd's cameo here? It was too funny. I think I think my brother commanded it. He was, it was uh, evil, evil Rick. So it's like it's, it's evil Rick in this, in this one-off episode. So yeah. it's fascinating to see him in this light and also to see him being, being who he is, like just a legit 
legendary actor like making this great cameo in Star Wars. So now has he been? Yeah, so he has been in Star Trek before. Now he's in Star Wars and he's back to the future and he's Rick and Morty. So he's Rick Sanchez. So yeah, he's he been played, in a he, lot of sci-fi. He played stuff. a major uh, bad guy, didn't he? In a, yeah, in a... Star Trek Three. Star Trek Three. Search for Spock. He was Fruit or something. I don't sub, remember sub, the name sub of Klingon. Yes, he was yeah. a Klingon. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. He's been all over the place in the in our sci-fi lore. So yeah, probably Nerd Hall of Fame. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, the inter interesting conversation here with of nuts. Nuts. Yeah, you suspect them at first because of the way they're being like a standoffish, but they have a good reason to be like, people are like questioning our work. We stand by our work. Correct. But they have obviously been tracking the weird things that have been happening with the droids. So they get, that's why they get the list of uh, possible issues. And also, I think it's a callback as well in that, that Din has already had the experience back in season one with Upbot. And then and I think that's a good way, a good allegory to say that he is very, he has traveled so many to, to so many worlds and known so many cultures that he's calm he's almost like he's respecting other people's cultures and respecting their customs and their beliefs and things like that and this is how you're supposed to interact with people so i think that's a very good lesson for all of us in terms of an allegory to respecting other people and different cultures and stuff and how you approach people in different ways. yeah i think that you could actually say that about both of them now now both of them have seen a lot of different things and they see things from different people's perspectives and they, and they will work well together here he has his prejudice against the droids <laughs> with your rights, yeah. Yeah, his prejudice <laughs> yeah. against the droids so if this is not the most subtle way to find the issue. That is true. He was reading or watching something recently that said this is basically a scene out of iRobot. Yes, w it Wilson is. does the same thing. He antagonizes a bunch of robots yes. until, one, until Ron runs away and then he runs after him. This is exactly yep. the same scene. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. And then she, and then they run after the droid and then they take him down. And apparently they find like a card or something. What did they say here? What did she say that they're, what did it's they like call she it? Had, they had an address and there was yeah. like some bar. It was some droid bar basically. A spark pad. A spark pad. I'm not even spark sure. Spark pad, yeah. Yeah, Uber spark pad is. Yeah. Which is just, which is funny. It's like trying to translate things from detective movies. So this would have been like a matchbook book right. in, in a detective movie. So it is I also- did, I, did, I did find it strange where she mentioned that there was an address and I was like, there's addresses in Star Wars. It's, that was a little bit of, that took me away from it a yeah, little bit. Yeah, and, and there's yeah. an address. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, you still I get have to be able it. to get to things. I feel like an address is not, is so like she, a, a, a universal system that some, someone would have to, yeah. I think every, everyone would have to systematize how to get fixed things and people to certain locations. So I don't okay. have an issue with address. I mean, she could have said location, but yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, it took me just a little bit. I'm just yeah. like, the addresses in Star Wars is like... <laughs> this bar's name is funny, the Resistor. Again, you think, you're thinking, okay, are the, is, this is, where, is this where they meet to resist? But of course, that's also an electrical engineering yeah. term. To, yeah. So you suspect the droids until the, the bartender speaks up here and says, we, we find this is an issue too. We don't want to get replaced. So... Right. Yeah. So, right. And it's funny because because when I was watching this, I was thinking about Din was pretty much droid profiling. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, what is going on? You just, like, just assume that they're evil. Yeah, you, just, yeah, you just assume that they're evil. This is why I said that they were well together she's she's like chill chill like you handled that the first part let me handle this my way and she actually yeah. got information out of them yes so it's funny they're doing an autopsy here he's basically in, in every crime drama autopsy yep. and then we find something oh, of course this probe droid is going crazy and this is where they find that the who is it sorry it's the what's his name i forget the guy commissioner Halgate. that's who oh, that's hellgate. Who hellgate hellgate, hellgate. Was it hellgate? hellgate. That's, yeah. yeah hellgate commissioner hellgate that's who chris lord is playing back to him and he says something about dooku was right <laughs> it's like it was cut down too soon yeah and it's all these people that i feel like the separatists did have a reasonable thing they just want to be left alone by the new republic that's why they wanted to separate and if you've seen like the star wars not the star wars visions what was the shorts tales of the jedi tales of the jedi yeah before dooku was corrupted by palpatine he had legitimate issues with the republic yes there was obvious corruption yeah and i understand why he left the jedi order for a lot of reasons ahsoka left the jedi order there was corruption there was obvious right. corruption there but also but also again we talked about how qui-gon we saw at the beginning of episode one was like questioning things and yeah. qui-gon was was dooku's paddle so it's so you saw that type of dynamic going on yeah. Uh, yeah, the Jedi are definitely not foolproof. They're not above it all. It's right. there's definitely some things that are that are corrupt and just like any other institution that are there. Yeah, it's not, not, not just corruption. Yeah. I feel like they weren't corrupt and they were just hu hubristic. Like they assumed that they were above it all. I feel like this also came up in an episode when Ahsoka left the temple and she met the Martell sisters and said that the, the Jedi don't really pay attention to what's going on with us or what's happening. They're fighting these wars and they were basically positioned into into fighting these wars. They were not supposed to be generals. They were supposed to be peacekeepers. Um, yes. So they were, they weren't paying attention. They had the eye off the ball, basically. So, right, yeah. right, exactly. So she exiles him to a moon, and for some reason, knights Grogu, which is, I guess, he becomes a knight anyway, even though he's not going to be a Jedi knight. He's a knight of this planet. Just and because he's cute. Just, just because. because. Just he because. Is, yeah. He is super cute. So, so, <laughs> so it's so funny. Earlier on the episode, she's like, "Can I hold the baby?" And she's like, "Oh, he doesn't like to be had. All he needed was some food." And he's like, oh. "Yeah, I know. It's kind of too funny." <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. This conversation on the tube here, basically the monorail here. It's like, "What are you going to do?" I don't even know. 
So <laughs> this this fight was good. So yeah, for, this is actually good action right here. Yeah, for an episode that was mostly not sleepy, but like a procedural, like an episode mm -hmm. of Non Order, they had a pretty right. good, pretty state well staged fight scene sequence here. So yeah, this stuff was good. What do you think of the stuff after this, the dark saber, the way that the way that she got it? Because I've heard people complaining about that, like she getting it on a technicality as opposed well, to like, like I yeah. feel like that some people just wanted them to go at it for some. For, some people are thinking saying it's only because Disney doesn't want to kill either one of these characters off. They don't want to write it like Game of Thrones. But if you want to watch Game of Thrones, go watch Game of Thrones. Like, like this is not supposed to be Game of Thrones. I don't know. I do know that like some parts of the Star Wars does go hard Andor. Like yep. all the shows can't be Andor. Would like that. Would like if some of the shows dip into the Andor Andor place. But no, one of them cutting off the other one's head would have been a good solution to, to their conflict. Given that kids watching yeah. the show specifically. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that it's. I think that in terms of the tone, Mandalorian is definitely much more lighthearted because of Rogu there, and it's definitely. I mean, it's still great, but it's lighthearted than Andor. I mean, there's definitely also. I watched the Bad Batch this past season. The Bad Batch. There's some dark scenes. There's some really yeah. moments in Batch as well. But but that's that Batch is also a, another era within the Star Wars timeline. But also it's a dip. It's a it's a get different tone. It's for kids, but definitely for yeah. a teenager, preteen rather than for little kids. So the audience kind of depends on what it is, and there's a wide audience for everything. Going back to what you said about the the technicality, I found it to be very creative. I found it to be wow. That is something that we never thought about. Was that yeah. yes, she was the enemy that the evil eye basically captured did and basically Bo Katan took it and that's what had really happened. That like, is what that, that that is what yeah. happened. But like I said, I think some people just yeah. wanted them to go at it. I don't know. I've criticized yeah. the show in the past for being a little bit too kiddy in places. And I think you were just talking about the Bad Batch. I think the Bad Batch writes a good balance. Seeing, seeing it's how it is a kid show of dipping yeah. some of the intrigue and dipping into the complex political stuff and also some yes. of the dark stuff. Um, like it full on had a horror episode earlier on in the season and I guess that yeah. I guess the episode when he was captured was a little bit of horror but it wasn't nearly as hard it, like they did basically like an alien episode in the season, yeah. in the season of the, the Bad Batch which is a little bit which is I don't know I didn't need them to kill each other or one of them kill no. each other and, it, and yeah. people are saying that like the Mandalorian is Vavro's creation bo Katan is Dave Filoni's creation, so they're not going to kill either one of them. I guess that might be part of the consideration, but I didn't, I like both of those characters. I'd rather, like, I don't know that I need to ship everyone who's who's a male and female, but after this episode, I can see them, like, co- running Mandalore or sh him being yeah. like a an advisor to her or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, I like the chemistry together. I like this whole, I like this episode because show, show how well they work together. So I don't need right. one of them to kill the other one. So do you think, but over, also over it's funny a, because over a sword. Yeah. do you think that they, there's going to be some sparks because it was funny because going back to where they were saying you have me at droids and I was like, oh, wait a second. They're try <laughs> trying to, uh, is Groku going to get space mom? I don't know. Space yeah. mom or space mom? Space mom basically. I, I don't see, know. I, I didn't see them together until this episode and now I'm thinking you know what they might i've seen them working together in previous episodes like all season long and actually i was looking back after after this end of this episode i really like i said i didn't think of them together i, I just thought of her as another like mandalorian i know a lot about her because of the clone wars but looking back at all our thumbnails like pretty much every thumbnail this season including this one for this episode is has both of them together because they've been together right. basically the entire season except for episode one so right. like every time i was looking for a good shot of him she was next to him every single episode <laughs> every single episode so, so it's yeah. gonna be space mom or yeah. not space auntie anymore it's gonna be space mom pretty yeah. much for any final yeah. thoughts before we wrap? Yeah, so we got two more episodes left of Mandalorian. So it's so we're getting toward the we're getting toward the end to see where it culminates to. We just saw the Ahsoka trailer as well. Yeah. So don't know if they're going to really lean in, into that toward the end, or are they just going to keep it separate. Not sure. Which, but I think I heard I saw online that it was going to be a 50 minute episode. So maybe some big surprises in this penultimate episode coming up or episode was it seven? Yeah, seven. Yeah, we get Ahsoka this year. We also get the Skeleton Gru this year. I'm not sure the Skeleton Gru where that stands like in the timeline i know something yeah. is in around the same time but i don't know if skeleton is like during luke's time like during ray's time i have no idea where that lands so right right all right yeah i'm looking forward to the end as well we we'll probably get some off gideon and we shall right. we shall see all right well Definitely. that's what we think we want to hear what you guys think so please comment down below like share and subscribe and check out our last review or check out one of our reviews of picard all right see you bye